Hi, I'm Tom on the Budget and today we're going to talk about shipping and oh boy, if you watch what's going on with shipping then you will know that a lot of ship has happened in the last few years. This is part two of my videos where I talk about popular routes that are available for you to ship your vehicle in and out of Australia. If you're not familiar with a lot of shipping terms and shipping basics, I talk about those a lot more in part one. I will mostly base this on my experience of getting my motorbike from Australia towards Europe via Asia. So I'll be talking about the direct route from Darwin to Timor-Leste or Dili, anecdotes on air freight from Australia, the Indonesia option, shipping to Malaysia and I'll talk a little bit as well about China and getting a motorbike out from Southeast Asia towards Europe. If you're zooming out on the map and you want to trace the path which would involve the most riding to get towards Europe then the most obvious route is to go towards Darwin, from Darwin get somehow to Indonesia and then from there you can get into Malaysia and you're already on mainland Southeast Asia and you can get from there all the way via land to Europe. I'll start with the island nation of Indonesia because it takes up most of the water stretch between Australia and mainland Southeast Asia. And it's quite doable by motorcycle. You've got very good transportation between the islands either by car ferry or you can use bulk cargo ships or onion boats as they call them where you would do a sketchy move across a plank and put your motorcycle onto the boat and then you take it off on the other island where you're going to. It's also a very pretty country with amazing scenery and mountains especially on the eastern islands. However, traffic there can be quite slow. How slow? 30 kilometers an hour average or slower especially as you go further west towards Bali and Sumatra. The biggest issue you run into is getting a vehicle into Indonesia. If you want to just ride as much as possible from Australia then if you look on the map you'll see that East Timor or Timor-Leste is really really close to Darwin. And once you're there, uh, the port is in Dili. From there, it's very, very easy to just ride to Kupang. And then from Kupang, you can then take the ferries to get to East Nusa Tenggara. And then you can island hop all the way out to Malaysia. So you might ask, what's the issue there, Tom? Nathan Millward used that trip when he went from Sydney to London in 2009. And there's plenty of trip reports on Horizons Unlimited and Ride ADV. The problem is that back then, it was a lot easier to get a slot on the boat. You even read stories of a bike speed just put on in spaces in between on the boat with costs going as low as $300 reduce. The problem we run into unfortunately is a progress. Back then it was so much easier to get a slot on a boat. Sometimes they would just even put a motorbike right between some spaces on a ship. They wouldn't even put it into a container. And the costs were very, very different as well. I've read some reports of people in 2012 or well before of only paying $300. Uh, in 2017, I found one article that uh, talked about $700 for the service. I know inflation has been a problem, but boy, oh boy, things have changed. Researching this will make you pull some of your hairs out. And unless you can just throw money at the problem and just forget about it, it's, it's going to involve quite a bit of research, which is made more complicated by the amount of changes that happened to the business that runs this route. I'm happy for you to correct me in the comments, please. If you know something better, please update me. But, to my knowledge, the route used to be run by a company called Perkins. That business got then sold to Toll. It then somehow became ANL. I'm not sure if it was spun out or something. Toll themselves, who were involved in it, have also had a bit of a reshuffle as they got bought up by Japan Post and are now operating as Global Express. Now, the reshuffle of ANL happened as well as they're now being operated by French shipping company CMA CGM. At least with the latest reshuffle they seem to have kept most of their staff and email addresses as well so those that you find on ADV Rider should still work. So I was actually quite happy when I managed to get hold of the right people and I've actually even been quite forthcoming but unfortunately as you know I did not take this route. And the reason for that is twofold. A it's quite expensive but also very uncertain and going to the freight forwarders is of no use unfortunately you will tend to get the same response from them that they'll recommend against shipping from Darwin into Dili partly because of the uncertainty of that route. 
To give you some specifics, when I inquired in Christmas 2023 for my little wave, I've been quoted about $2,600 to ship via LCL. That does not include the storage in Darwin or fees in Dili, which from memory would have been about $700, but could have been more as well. Unless things have changed, they do have two ships that are doing the run between Darwin and Singapore, with Dili being the stop on the southbound journey back from Singapore. That journey from Darwin to Dili takes about two weeks, with ships entering every two and a half to three weeks. However, if you are shipping anything via LCL on that route, that time frame can vary significantly. When I was contacting them, they averaged about one shipment per month, and sometimes they would even skip a month because they just didn't have enough to make the voyage worth it for them. And the issue you can run into is one of customs and of delays. Because you have to be present at the port in Dili to get your bike out of customs, if the shipment gets delayed, it might take long enough that your visa in Timor-Leste expires, so they have to scramble out of the country and then back in again. If you're not in a hurry to get your bike shipped out of Australia once it reaches Darwin, then you'd think that all you need to do is just put it in storage and somehow you can organize it that it will be shipped in time right there are some shippers that will do that the problem is one of money getting any storage in darwin is way more expensive than it is in brisbane or even in sydney and unfortunately i couldn't get anything out of anl as well on that topic either so your more affordable option may be just to hang around somewhere in Darwin in the area, just wild camp somewhere in Litchfield National Park, which is not that cheap either, and then book a flight as soon as you know a date and then fly to Dili. Another option that requires some organization or if you've got a car is your only way anyway is to do FCL or a full container load. Here I've been quoted about 5000 Australian dollars for a 20 foot container in December last year. Of course, there's going to be additional fees for each individual vehicles, but once you've got more than three motorbikes, then this might actually work out. The only challenge then is finding enough people who are willing to ride all the way from wherever there will be, most likely on the East Coast or maybe from Perth all the way to Darwin. I was considering and even looking forward to doing this route because it does go through some very, very scenic areas. However, you do have to consider the cost of doing this because you do have to consider that it's 3,500 kilometers from Brisbane or more from any of the other capital cities. With a lot of that trip going through areas with really expensive fuel and quite rough tarmac, which just shreds reds tires so if you've got a motorcycle with quite expensive tires you will add quite a bit of wear onto those plus additional components like your engine and chain as well which are not that easy to source in darwin so you do have to pre-order those as well Especially if you're on a big bike, you want it to be ready to keep going for quite a long distance because you're about to enter a quite underdeveloped part of the world where you might have to ride all the way until Bali or Jakarta before you can even consider getting anything for a big bike or you might have to make it all the way even until Kuala Lumpur. These are just the complications of shipping by sea out of Darwin. Things are actually worse going the other way. Such was the experience of Tran Dang Koa or Jack, a friend of mine, an absolute legend of a guy. He's also someone who inspires me to a good extent because he traveled on a Vietnamese on the wave around the world in 2017. He posts in Vietnamese but he can use translate in Facebook or auto translated captions on YouTube to watch his content. He recently took his Suzuki carry van named Sock or Baby Squirrel on that route. That guy he's got the patience of a Buddhist monk and an attitude that is just admirable. It took three weeks before he could finally get an appointment to get a quarantine inspection and unfortunately he missed some grass that was lodged on his radiator so he failed the quarantine inspection. The damage? $1,000. And on top of that, a month in delays because apparently Darwin Port is really congested at the moment. In total, it cost $4,500 and it took a month and a half just to get his van out of the port of Darwin. With boats being a bit costly and a bit of a pain, what about putting your bike on a plane? I mean, that's what I'm doing with my bike to get it out of Thailand into Kazakhstan because it's cheaper than riding through China. Well, sadly, bad news. If you look on Skyscanner, you will see the actual problem. And that is that all of the flights between Darwin and Dili are all narrow bodies and they just cannot accommodate a motorcycle. To stay on the topic of air freight, what about other routes then from the capital cities to maybe fly into Surabaya in Indonesia or to other places and my experience of finding anybody to do air freight out of Australia has been miserable unfortunately and the reason is simply just change in the industry apparently many many years ago you used to be able to just contact Qantas or some other big carriers and they would be able to sort you out if you contact them today all they'll do is forward you on to commercial freight forwarders who then in turn will forward you on to retail freight forwarders that very 
very frequently will just panic and run away as soon as you mention a vehicle because dangerous goods. With some luck you can find a freight forwarder that will deal with your vehicle and put it on a plane but expect that it will require a purchase certificate which means draining even the fuel lines on your motorcycle and the costs are very very high. The highest quote I've been given was from DHL and it was $9,000 to fly my motorcycle from Brisbane into Surabaya. At the time I didn't know yet how expensive the customs or how broken customs are in Indonesia and it's actually so bad that even a lot of freight forwarders just don't want to deal with anything in Indonesia just because they don't have any good contacts and because of the high risk of things just going wrong and it actually continues even beyond shipping in and out of Australia. If you want to get your motorcycle out of Malaysia into Indonesia expect it to be difficult and expensive. Don't even think about Singapore that is a royal pain in the neck. Uh, you can get with a boat that's run by a gentleman named Tony however that boat will cost you about $500 in either direction. There is an alternative route you can take via Borneo. Unfortunately, it is really slow as it can take multiple weeks. And I've heard it's just hearsay that there is an increased risk of theft out of containers as well. So you might ask, what would I recommend or what have I done? Well, I have been very, very lucky. I have posted up stuff on Facebook and found a group or a group found me where we shared a container all the way from Brisbane into Malaysia in Port Klang. That will the container with one Toyota Land Cruiser troop carrier and two motorcycles where the troop carrier was paying two motorcycle parts equivalent with a total of $1,350 to get the bike out of Australia into Malaysia and then another $1,230 to get it all the way into Malaysia. Unfortunately the port charges into Port Klang are just really expensive and it's not like you've got many alternatives anymore because Singapore is really costly to get a vehicle through if you want to drive it and Thailand always is a bit uncertain with their requirement for a tour guide. Something that you do need to get in Malaysia is an ICP. They do honor the carnet system but they need to have this second document again so you can ride legally. The document is free and you don't have to pay a penalty if you overstay it as long as you're not riding a motorcycle. The only issue it is a bit of a pain in the neck to obtain. If you're crossing via land border from Thailand then it's a breeze because at the border they've got everything you need. They've got a local insurance broker that will be able to give you insurance and then right next to it there will be the office or the JPJ, the Department of Transport, which can issue you that document. In the Kuala Lumpur area it's a little bit more difficult because the only place that issues the document is the Road Transport Department or JPJ's headquarters at the Putrajaya branch which is a little bit out of the way. But before you can apply for the ICP you still need to get your insurance and that is a little bit tricky to get. I have had some luck by going into this little agency which is in the building just opposite of the JPJ office. Or just use the easy option of just throwing money at the problem and let somebody else do the running around for you. So if your freight forwarder has got somebody who can get you the insurance and the ICP just go with them. Otherwise you can look up Mr. Cheon Insurance. He can maybe organize that for you. He will charge you for it but at least you don't have to do any running around. A last advantage of Malaysia is that you can leave your motorcycle in the country as long as you've got a valid carnet and if you've got a good shipper like I have been fortunate with you can store it there for a while and all of that at a relatively affordable cost. In my case it was 45 US dollars for my tiny little Honda Wave which allowed me to then do some side trips like the ones that we did to Indonesia where we hired some small scooters, Japan and Taiwan as well. And so from here you can now go and explore Southeast Asia with the only problem being getting out of Southeast Asia. Here unfortunately Myanmar is closed and you can't get through because of the civil war that's raging in the country. And China is a country where you get very very mixed opinions. Where some people liked it and some said it was absolutely dreadful because you have to cover long distances. Apparently one province is no longer allowing motorcycles through so your distance can creep up to 8000 kilometers just to get from Laos into Kazakhstan. And everybody complaining about the cost. It is really, really pricey. It's not, and it's not just a tour guide. The guide will set you back about two thousand to two thousand five hundred dollars if you go in a big group. If you go solo, that can go well above five thousand dollars. But there are more expenses as well. You have to pay for more expensive food. Filling up a fuel is a pain as well because you're not allowed to fill up yourselves in China with accommodation. Taking up another big brand out of your budget because you have to stay where the tour guide wants to stay. And if the tour guide decides that he's going to stay at a Hilton hotel 
hotel, well, you have to stay at a Hilton hotel. So, how did I get my motorcycle out of Southeast Asia? I flew it, because at the moment, the options of getting out of Southeast Asia into the world are very, very challenging right now. With the chaos caused by the Houthis, extending timeframes to ship anything by quite a long margin. Because the ships have to go around Africa, they will now take up to three months to get into Europe. This even delays shipments into the Gulf states, because the ships no longer traverse through there as frequently anymore. So your best option really is to air freight it out of Southeast Asia. And I have been fortunate that I have found Seafly services in Bangkok and they're actually relatively affordable, where the fees were more or less similar between the major destinations that you would consider shipping a motorcycle into. With a lot of the main destinations you'd be looking into costing a similar rate because they're relying on Qatar Airways who fly everything through their main hub. And these destinations include Kazakhstan, Kathmandu and Nepal, but even to Europe, it's a very similar cost as if you had to ship it to Kazakhstan. How much you might ask? So for my Honda Wave, which is very, very light, that bike with the crate only weighed about 216 kilograms. It was 2,500 US dollars plus another hundred couple dollars for clearance in Almaty, which I know is more expensive than my Honda Wave, but it is a lot cheaper still than if I had taken a big motorcycle. And that should cover most of the things I wanted to talk about in this video. I know I will have forgotten something and hopefully you can remind me in the comments. I read every single one of them. And if you like this video, I know it wasn't the most exciting one, but if there's some good information in there, why not give it a thumbs up? And if you want to follow my trip, a subscription goes a very long way as I'm trying to reach monetization status. And until the next time, I hope you have a great time.